What's shaking fire nation? JLD here and welcome to episode 1529 of EO Fire. And this is where I chat with today's most successful entrepreneur seven days a week and goals equal success. And with the Freedom Journal, you'll be accomplishing your number one goal in 100 days, Fire Nation, thefreedomjournal.com. Now let's chat with today's featured guest, Whitney Nicely. Whitney, are you prepared to ignite? Yes, sir. Woo! Whitney teaches women how to build a cash-flowing real estate portfolio in 12 weeks or less. Now, Whitney, besides yours being my favorite intro because of just the very few words that you had in here, I love that. Expound. Fill in some gaps. Let us know what Fire Nation needs to know about you. Well, the first thing you need to know is when you start talking about a real estate portfolio, you do not need a real estate license to be an investor, and you don't need to go to real estate school because they're not going to teach you how to make money investing in real estate. They're going to teach you how to stay out of jail and fill out the forms. The second thing I'll let everybody know is that you don't need any money to get started in real estate investing, and you certainly don't need to save up $100,000 or pay off your primary mortgage. You need to just get started investing and then pay off everything later with the money that you're making. Well, I like how this is sounding, and I also like the sound of your accent, Winnie. So give us a little glimpse of your personal life, too. Where are you coming from? I am in Knoxville, Tennessee. I was born and raised here. Cool. I went to UT, go Vols. And <laughs> I started, after college, working at my family's dump truck company. We've been in business since 1939. I'm the fourth generation entrepreneur, so all of this is very natural and very scary to me at the same time. I think it's scarier for my mom because I really stepped out of trucking and full-time into real estate, whereas everybody else just kind of dabbles in real estate. Well, let's kind of talk about that for a second. Your area of expertise is real estate, so kind of expound upon what that means. What is your specific area of expertise? Owner financing and lease options, which is weird real estate. It's creative financing. I'm never going to ask any of the ladies or the men, because I have a few men that work with me, but I'm never going to ask them to go to the bank, put 20% down, or do all that old and slow, boring kind of investing that we're all kind (laughs) of used to. I mean, it's just not how you're going to make any money, and you're certainly not going to make as much as you need to retire by the time you turn 35. It's just not going to happen. Give me an example of one of your favorite deals to date. Like share as many numbers as possible. Like how transparent are you willing to be with us numbers wise, deals wise? Break down one of your favorite real estate deals. I'm going to tell you about my first deal. Well, this is my first deal once I figured out owner financing and lease options because I tried putting all my money into real estate and trying to get it back and that didn't work. So I had to figure out really fast how I could put it on a fast track and buy more houses, buy apartments, buy land without any money. So the first deal I did when I put this system into place, I bought a house in Dandridge, Tennessee, which is close to the lake, and I put it under contract for 122000 which was par for the neighborhood, and I put it up for sale. 145, I had somebody out of Chicago, a couple came down and offered me 135,000 for my house cash. And they wanted to close in like two months when their house in Chicago sold. Well, I told them that would be fine, except they had to rent the house from me in the meantime. So sure enough, everything lined up perfectly. I made 13,000 just on the sale and I had no money involved in it. And this took like eight weeks. And really all I did was make a bunch of phone calls. But they also rented the house from me for two months at $1,000 a month. So I made another 2,000. All in, all done, my first deal, eight weeks, maybe like five hours on the phone, I made over $15,000. So let's kind of break down what owner financing is. You've thrown that around a few times, kind of break it down in layman's terms. Owner financing only works on free and clear houses. And believe it or not, there's people out there that don't have a mortgage on their house. They own it outright. So what I do is I get the owner to finance me the property. So I don't have to go to the bank. I usually don't put any money down. I get 0% interest. And I just start making them payments on a house that they don't want. And lots of people have houses that they don't want. They either outgrew it or they need to downsize. They got transferred. All sorts of things can make people just not want a house. Or they inherited it and they never planned on moving back to mom and dad's house. And they just kind of forgot about it. People forget they own houses. (laughs) How do you find people that own their houses free and clear? I've got six different ways, but the best way is to ask everybody. Hey, you know anybody with a house they got paid off they don't want anymore? cool. I want to buy it. (laughs) And you would be surprised at how often that works because I am real and I am frank and I just ask for what I want. 
Yeah, we're proud of being debt-free, Fire Nation. That's what an American is. I mean, when we can just kind of say, hey, I own this house, no mortgage, we're going to say it. And your friends, your family, they're going to hear it. And so when someone's kind of talk, uh, going around saying, hey, does anybody own their house free and clear? They're going to be like, oh, John owns his house free and clear down in Puerto Rico. And when he's like, I want to go take a trip down to Puerto Rico, she comes down, talks to me. Next thing we know, deal, set, match. But Woody, what I kind of want you to do for us right now, you've broken down your area of expertise. We're obviously going to talk a little bit more about it in a minute. But before that, what is something that we don't know about your area of expertise? Like, Give us one value bomb, like a tip, a tool, or a tactic, you know, just kind of like you did with, you know, just ask like that. That's a tactic. That's a tool. But what's something that we don't know that we should know about your area of expertise? If we're going to talk about houses, free and clear houses are great, but they are kind of a needle in a haystack. So if you're going out and you're talking to people and you say, I want to buy houses, a lot of people are going to have a mortgage. And it's very easy and regular for people to say, hey, I don't want to live in this house anymore. I'm just going to rent it or I'm going to lease it. Okay, that's normal, right? Or people are going to say, okay, I'm just going to sell this house. Okay, fine. So on a lease option, that's the other thing that you can do with a house with a mortgage on it. You can literally, in the same contract or in two different contracts signed at the same time, you can lease a house with the option to purchase it at some point down the road for agreed upon price. So one thing that you talked about earlier was your favorite deal where in just like eight weeks, you clear something around $15,000. You know, me just being a businessman, I kind of first go to like, wow, like that's great. But at the same time, there's some real taxes on that profit. So what is what are your strategies with that tax? Do you just pay the tax? Like what is the tax approximately in Tennessee? And do you have other creative ways to maybe roll that with like a 1031 like kind exchange into that next property? I have not been able to do a 1031 exchange, but one thing about real estate is if you're out and you're buying a lot and you're selling a lot, but you're keeping a lot, there's going to be a lot of expenses on houses that you keep. And sometimes, you know, you will show a loss on your taxes when actually maybe you didn't make money or maybe you really did have a loss, but you can carry that for years and you get appreciation, you get depreciation. There's lots of different things that if you're just a I don't want to say just, but if you are a small business owner, then yeah, you get taxed off the top. But if you are a real estate investor, there's all sorts of different things that will figure into how much you are actually taxed. So worst case scenario, like what are we seeing or thinking tax wise, like on that 15K? Like if you had just gone in, done that one deal, never did another deal again in your life, had no expenses, like what are you paying percentage wise on that 15K? I think the top capital gains tax bracket is 35%. Okay, so you'd be looking at 35%. So even Fire Nation, you know, a cool 10K is sticking in your pocket from that eight days of work, free and clear from taxes. So there's opportunities here. And Whitney, you've given us one of your favorite deals, which I asked for. So thank you for that. But now give us your worst entrepreneurial moment story. You know, there's been the ups, there's been the downs. Take us to the day that that worst moment happened and tell us that story. I thought the only way to buy houses was either with cash or going to the banks. And this is before I knew even what the definition of owner financing or lease options was. So I found an auction and I love buying properties at auction. I'm also an auctioneer, but you can get a really good deal on a house at auction. It doesn't have to be a foreclosure either. So anyway, I was on my way out of town. I saw this house was going to be up for auction. I sent my brother over to look at it and he was like, please, dear God, Whitney, don't buy this house. Like we don't need to get started this way. (laughs) This is not going to be our first house. This is a disaster. And I was like, okay, Ty, but really, if you were going to bid on it, how much would you bid? And he was like, no more than eight or 10,000. And I was like, okay, so like 15, I could probably go up to 15. And he was like, no, (laughs) please don't. And I was like, okay, so 15 it is. So I put my bid in and the auction ended at midnight. It was an online only auction. And that morning I got a email that said, congratulations, you are now the owner of this crack house in a bad neighborhood that your brother (laughs) didn't want at all. And I'll tell you that over the next six weeks, we closed, we paid right at 15000 all in, all done, including the um, auctioneer fee and everything. We were right at 15000 And I went over there, we went to clean it, and the floors were like soggy, like a sponge. They weren't hard like they were supposed to be. The neighbors on the left side, there was a smell coming from that house that I've never smelt before in my life. Had the cops called on us while we were over there. I called the cops to escort me over there one time. Like it got really, really bad to where I didn't want to be there by myself. And if you're uncomfortable buying an investment house and you don't want to be there at night or 
you know, it's just bad, get out sell it. So that's what we did. We put it back up for auction. We ended up selling it at absolute auction online again with the same company. And I had bidders against me at 13, 14, 15,000. I thought somebody would bid that again. It bottomed out at 10. Mm. So we lost money, but I did not get kidnapped or mugged or raped or anything bad happened. We just lost four grand. And like I already said, you know, we just take that on our taxes and move on. Take it on the taxes, take it on the chin and move on. And Fire Nation, the only winner in that scenario, by the way, was the auctioneers. Because even the person that sounds like <laughs> they bought that for $10,000, they're probably regretting that purchase as well. So, Whitney, my biggest takeaway here is you, you just, you, you got to know what you're getting into. Like, you really got to do the research. You, you know, there's, there's something for just holding your breath and taking that leap, which we talk about a lot as entrepreneurs, because that next step won't reveal itself till you take that first step. But when it comes to stuff like real estate and just the physical propertyness of that, and you can do that background research, you need to do it, Fire Nation. And you got to go with your guts. And, you know, I know Whitney's gut was probably telling her, I should listen to my brother here. Obviously, her brother's gut was telling her, let's pass on this one. But Whitney, what do you want to make sure Fire Nation gets from your story? After that, I really had to figure out what was going on in real estate. And that's when I figured out how to create an exit strategy. I figured out how to evaluate the comps. I could um, get a contractor, you know, to give me a quote. And I knew the steps you needed to take before you actually put that offer in. And that's what I try to tell the people that I work with now is you don't have to wing it like I did. Like I only knew old and slow real estate, put money down, eventually it'll come back. There's strategies, there's formulas. I got a mentor and all of that coming together really helped me so that I could actually transition this into a full-time thing instead of just dabbling and playing and, you know, risking my whole life savings. I don't want anybody to do that. Let me help you. (laughs) I want to glob onto that word mentors because it's so important. Fire Nation, you need to find somebody who's been or is currently where you want to be. So somebody who's been on that journey, somebody who's currently where you want to be. If Whitney had found a successful real estate investor and had a conversation with that person before she went down that initial road, that person would have given her a lot of red flags and a lot more to think about before taking that step. So it's so important to find that mentor. Now, Whitney is that mentor to so many others, allowing them to avoid those rabbit holes and to you know, really push the fast forward button around some obvious mistakes or some shortcuts that are, are there if you just know them because there are some good shortcuts out there if you know the right path to take. So, Wendy, I kind of want to move into another story. Obviously, owner financing, lease options, things that we've talked about, these are all great ideas that you've had and that you've really just unveiled as we've had this interview, this chat today. But what's one of your greatest ideas to date that you can really tell back to us in a story? Take us there. At that same auction that I bought my little crack house, I bought a half acre piece of industrial land. And when we talk about land, there's four different levels, like a pyramid of land and industrial is the top. And I bought half acre of industrial land, Really didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I figured it was pretty cheap. It was 1500 bucks. I could gamble 1500 bucks. What happened when I bought it, I also found out that the neighbor who had been using this driveway, that wasn't their driveway. It was my driveway. And about a month after I bought it, I went and talked to my neighbor who is a Fortune 500 company, like a really big deal, and told them that they needed to rent that driveway from me. They couldn't just drive on my land anymore. So they actually rent that driveway, rent raw land, grass, trees, nothing for $250 a month. So six months later, I had all my money back. And now for the rest of my life, I've got $250 just free flowing into my account, which isn't a whole lot. And, you know, even when I talk to real estate investors, I've got 17 houses, 19 apartment units and like six or seven chunks of land all bring me money every month. And that's not a whole lot in real estate terms. But for a lot of the people you know, listening, one or two houses is a big deal. And one or two chunks of land bringing in a couple extra, maybe thousand dollars a month can really change somebody's life. And you really don't have to start where you're uncomfortable. You can start with land. I love that. Just the land. I mean, you're not going to have those soggy floors that Whitney was talking about. You just have a piece of property. And what it 
Whitney Fine, like she did her research, and there's this company that's using her land as a driveway, and they obviously probably did not have a pre-existing right-of-way or something along those lines. So she said, hey, guys, like you can't just keep driving over my land. Like Let's talk about something. Now, of course, they could have probably gone to a great expense and spent potentially tens of thousands of dollars and found a way around that and like maybe created a new driveway. Who knows what the setup was like? Or they could have just been like, let's just do this. Let's pay 250 bucks a month. It's totally worth it for us. And guess what, Fire Nation? Whitney said a couple times, that might not be a lot of money. And to some people, it is. To some people, it might not be. But guess what? The land is also appreciating. And that land is going to be worth more as the years go by and the area builds up, et cetera. So there's kind of two angles to that as well. So Whitney, that's my big takeaway is, you know, once you've dived into something and you've really decided to make that decision, do your background research about it because you don't know what you're going to uncover, kind of be that detective. But what do you want to make sure our listeners get from your story? sell once like this 1500 bucks, I could probably sell it that land to the neighbor for maybe 20 or 30,000. I mean, they've got a bunch of money, but I can only sell it once and I can rent it for the rest of my life. And on their taxes, it looks better for them to rent than it does to buy. If you're renting a place, maybe you've got a commercial unit and you've got a yoga studio or something and you kind of know the landlord, you might want to say, hey man, I'm paying all this money and I'd really like to pay this money and actually be buying this property from you. What do you think about that? And if you talk to the right people at the right time, there's a great chance they may say, wow, that's a great idea. I was just thinking I needed to sell this. Fire Nation, have the conversations. Like the worst case scenario is it can be like, nope, not interested. But the best case is what Whitney just described. I mean, why not just have that conversation? Because again, at the very worst, they say no, but guess what? You've just improved yourself by having a conversation with a real business opportunity that's going to make you better for the next time. Now, Whitney, you have a lot of things going on. You mentioned over 17 properties, et cetera. But what's the one thing that has you most fired up today? really helping these other women because when I was working for my mom, I would get mad at the drivers if they did something silly or didn't pass a drug test or something. And I would get mad at them and mom would say, you can't drive them all. Well, now that I'm buying houses, I physically cannot buy all the houses that are empty and vacant and needing to be purchased across the country. So that's why I'm working with men and women, mostly women right now, but I'm teaching them how to set up their own retirement, set up their own residual income. And I work with a lot of real estate agents who only know 20% down, appraisals, inspections, going to the bank, all this red tape. And they don't realize how easy it is. And they've been passing up on thousands of dollars and hundreds of houses for 10 or 20 years that they could have been building their own portfolio at the same time. So that's what gets me excited now is really helping the other people because it's fun to help sellers get rid of a house they don't want. And it's helped fun to help buyers, but it's also helpful to do that all across the country. I even had a lady yesterday from France send me a message and she wanted to get started internationally. That was cool. And how about just beautifying the neighborhood, Fire Nation? I mean, you're improving one house that might inspire your next door neighbor who just left their house vacant or run down now be like, oh, well, maybe this is turning around. It might be worth me putting some money in this. And then you have this chain reaction, this domino effect, and you're just improving your neighborhood, your town, you know, the country. And as Whitney just said, the world, French. I mean, there it is. So Whitney, where can we, Fire Nation, find out more about working with you? Like, where could our listeners go to to kind of learn more about your strategies? You can go to WhitneyNicely.com and hit the Start tab. But if you really want to get started with me, I've got a present for everybody listening. And if you go to WhitneyNicely.com slash EOFire, I do a quick start program, which is four videos to get you started help you kind of wrap your brain around real estate because a lot of people are just confused. They feel like it's too big. They can't get a grasp on it. And it's not. It's really fun. It's, you know, pretty easy. And anybody can do this. You don't need a license. You don't need an experience. And so I'm going to give you the first video in my four part series for free. Whitney Nicely. That's N-I-C-E because she is nice. L Y dot com slash e o fire check it out fire nation and don't go anywhere because we're about to crush the lightning rounds after we thank our sponsors investing seems like one of those things that we can put off until we're ready to start thinking about retirement am i right not 
true. If you're looking for a platform that's simple to understand, easy to manage, and inexpensive for your investments, then check out M1 Finance. M1 Finance will provide you with an online broker who will let you customize and automate your investments. You control what percent of your money goes into various stocks and ETFs, and then M1 does all the work to enact your plan. You get all that with no commissions, just a low 0.35% annual fee. Get started with this little as $100 today, visit m1finance.com slash fire for six months of service free. You get custom portfolios, automated rebalancing, fractional shares, no commissions, and for six months, you get it all for free. That's m1finance.com slash fire. M1 Finance is a registered broker dealer, member FINRA, SIPC. If you're a marketer focused on helping local businesses, then one of the most high pressure situations you'll find yourself in is being able to show them results. It's a terrible feeling when you work so hard only to find yourself and your clients let down. That's why I'm excited to share a free training with you from my friend Billy Jean, where he's going to show you the best performing Facebook and Instagram ads created by his very own agency. Billy Jean has worked with some of the largest franchises in the world and has spent millions of dollars figuring out exactly what works and what doesn't work. From dentists to personal trainers to chiropractors to real estate agents, he's helped them all and he's going to show you exactly how he gets them results. Visit deliverroi.com to sign up for this free training. That's deliverroi.com. Whitney, are you prepared for the lightning rounds? I think so. (laughs) What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I was working in the family company and I really felt a lot of pressure that I needed to stay in the family company, even though I was, you know, 27 and I was ready to spread my wings and I was ready to fly and I was full of guts and glory and not a whole (laughs) lot else. And I just wanted to go. So I finally just stood up and left. What's the best advice you've ever received? Keep going. Good deal, bad deal, it's falling apart in your hands, whatever is happening, just keep going. There's going to be something down the line and you're going to either realize why it fell apart and you didn't get it. Like I was trying to buy a house one time and it just kept crumbling. I could not keep this deal together. And I eventually had the place surveyed and it turns out the property line cut straight through the kitchen. So that was a bad deal. I didn't need that house anyway and that's why it kept falling apart. (laughs) Once I figured that out, I was like, cool, I'm out, peace. Peace. See ya. What's a personal (laughs) habit that contributes to your success? I love a to-do list. And a lot of people will say don't have more than three or four things on a to-do list. No, I put everything I need to. (laughs) I I brain dump every night. I put it all out there and it feels really good to check off. Okay, I went to the gym. I went to the grocery store. I remembered this. I've done that. It's 10 o'clock and now I've done everything on my to-do list. What do y'all want to do now? I guess I'll go buy a house. (laughs) I love that. The feeling is great of just crossing things off to-do lists. I just love my workflowy because I can just erase things or mark them as complete. It's, it's a great feeling, Fire Nation. So I totally agree. Write stuff down and then accomplish it. And speaking of resources like workflowy, what's an internet resource that you'd recommend? If this, then that. I-F-T-T-T. Especially if you're looking for houses, you can get lost in Craigslist and Zillow and all those other websites. But you can go to If This and That, and I think they've changed the name to Applets now. And you just set up, I'm looking for this kind of house in this price range, in this zip code. Send it to me when something pops up on the internet. And then all you got to do is follow up with the sellers instead of spending all your time hunting sellers. If you could recommend just one book, what would it be and why? Salvador Ferragamo's autobiography, The Shoemaker of Dreams. And I know Grant Cardone just came out with Obsessed or whatever, but I think he got the idea from Ferragamo's book because that man was absolutely crazy about shoes and he made a fortune out of it. I still love my Ferragamo's now. (laughs) Whitney, I want to end it today on fire with a parting piece of guidance. The best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram, Whitney Buys Houses, because that's what I do, and you can too. (laughs) (laughs) And what's that parting piece of guidance? In my realm in Tennessee, everybody wants to be a Proverbs 31 woman, or the women want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And any Bible study or group that I've ever gone to, they always skip over the 16th verse, which says that she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. And then she creates a vineyard. She creates generational wealth. So a Proverbs 31 woman is a real estate investor. And if you want to be a real Proverbs 31 
woman, you need to start buying some land and creating that generational wealth for your family. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and you've been hanging out with Whitney and JLD today, so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Just type Whitney in the search bar. Her show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. Best show notes in the biz, timestamps, links galore. Don't forget about your gift from Whitney. WhitneyNicely.com slash EO Fire. Get on over there, check it out, and of course, reach out to Whitney because she uh, she just knows her stuff. And if this is exciting you, get on over there, find that right mentor. And Whitney, I want to thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Hey, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Whitney today. And if you are ready to turn your funnels on fire, check out our free course created by myself and Kate. And it's awaiting you over at funnelonfire.com. And I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Join Billy Jean on his free training as he shows you the best performing Facebook and Instagram ads that he uses to get his clients results. Visit 